Welcome to Two Guys in a Wrestling Podcast. I'm Michael Keaton, of course, as always, here with my cohort in crime, Joel. Okay, well, you know, I guess that was about the best intro I could expect from the love child of Marco Stunt and Paul Heyman, so thanks. Brock Lesnar! (laughs) Yeah. That First looks, of all, I'm not Marco Stunt. I didn't break my leg. I said the love child of. I, that's your daddy. Don't talk about your daddy like that. There's, a, there's, a, there's actually another stunt, and he's supposed to be wrestling at the G, uh, GCW Backyard Wrestling. Yeah, they have a show called Backyard Wrestling. And I guess you would know that, Yarder. <laughs> no, it's because I it's, it's, uh, it popped up on, on my Facebook and Twitter. Oh, you knew, yeah, it has a... Yeah, back, backyard wrestling is just like herpes. As soon as, as soon as you think you get rid of it, they just pop back up again. Well, I mean, it's, it's the show called Backyard Wrestling, but GCW is mostly like a hardcore thing. I think Zoe Janela actually owns it. And that tells me everything I need to know about that. David Arquette was there recently. He about died. That Okay, so that's actually the one where Marco Stunt did break his leg, and they, almost, they cut uh, David Arquette's throat with glass. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Nick Gage about killed him. So that was that's that's the idiots of pro wrestling. Pretty much. I mean, it's a bunch of deathmatch guys. Yeah. I mean, I don't even know where to start with the fact that David Arquette should never even be in a ring. I well, mean, at least you got to give him a little credit now because he's like, hey, I had no clue what I was doing. They threw me in there. They said this is the, the idea that played a part. I can appreciate David Arquette for this reason and this reason only. His proceeds from WCW went to the families of Draws and Owen Hart. I can appreciate okay. that. I, and, and yeah, that's great. But the fact of it is, he never should have been champion. That was... That Vince Russo has stated that it was not his idea to do that. Oh, that please. it was Tony Schiavone's idea. Oh, I honestly please. believe it was Vince Russo's idea. I know it was Vince Russo's idea. I think Tony Schiavone should kick him in the nuts for even suggesting that it was his idea. I mean, Tony Schiavone is a... You know, he's been in this for years. Yeah. He is actually respected. Yeah. Vince Russo... Ric Flair got him his job, actually. You know. Vince Russo wouldn't know a good idea if it jumped on his face and humped The him. only good ideas that he had was because he had Vince McMahon as his filter. I mean, that's a, that's a bad thing to say right now, but that's basically how Vince Russo got popularity. Well, yeah. I mean, that was- I mean, he had ideas of weird stuff happening, and he took Vince took some ideas from him, some ideas from other people, and melted those two together. And Well, yeah, that, and that's just it. That's the, the creative process. I guess that's the thing. When he was in WWE or F at, at that time was F, you know, he was not the final say. No, Vince is. Vince is Vince always, is always the, final the final say. say. And that's the problem with AEW right now. You don't know who the final say is. And, you know, you look at like WWF at that time, you had Pat Patterson working in it. You had Gerald Briscoe. Yeah, I think they were both you road had, agents at the time. Yeah, but I mean, they threw, they threw out Izzo. They threw stuff. finishes in. The fact is... um, and also at that time, where actually when Vince Russo started being a booker in WWE, WWF, the Jim booking Cornette team was, there. was Jim Cornette, Terry Pritchard. And actually Jim and Cornette came up with the way that Kane made his debut at yeah. Bad Blood. Because back in the day, uh, uh, I forgot what company it was, but it was like early 80s maybe. And there was this guy named, uh, he, was mis- he, he was this world's strongest man or whatever, and the way he debuted was in the cage match and he tore the roof he tore oh, yeah, the yeah. door he tore the door off tore the door off the cage and that's how Kane came to came to fact came, yeah. came into fruition he tore the door off the cage yeah it was and it definitely it saved Glenn Jacobs career oh I definitely mean, let's face it you had uh Isaac Yankel yeah and then you and, had and then uh, you had him play fake, fake diesel. diesel i mean was he lost a loser leafs town match to the fake razor Ramon. <laughs> and then and the smoky fake, mountain yeah, that, they were they were basically. Uh, I think Smoky Mountain, one of those. I don't fucking know. Yeah, it, I, I think well, at that time, Smoky Mountain. <laughs> Jim Cornette has said it. At that time, he basically worked with WWE, uh, WWF to see and that's offset what, the costs that he was losing on Smoky and that's Mountain. What, and that's what kills me. ECW. Paul Heyman was getting a check from from Mr. McMahon but yet he was going back and telling his boys oh they're the bad guys they're the bad guys well see that's what they that's really what they needed to do though to, to save it because they needed to come out as the renegade organization the one that was anti everything yeah everything they had to be different for. they had to be different yeah and it was it really and it worked because I mean they were going up against billion dollar you know production budget 
and they didn't have that. <laughs> yeah, Paul Heyman's production budget sometimes was a uh, was twenty five cents. Yeah, you know, for for ECW was you know we'll work for food, two guys and a camera. Pretty much. I mean that was just it. I mean, like the I'm like in like towards the end of ECW, the only really only person that kept it really going at that time because Paul was out trying to get other TV deals for ECW was Tommy Dreamer. Yeah. And uh, uh, Bubba Ray had a big part in it. Yeah, that he a lot was. Of people yeah, didn't realize. I mean, he was booking. He he was booking arenas. Yeah, you know, it was really it was a little engine that could. Yeah. But Lau, I guess that's a good segue into the other little engine that well may. Uh, I'm not even gonna say could. What AEW? AEW. I mean, Fighter Fest. Oh my God, there was now, some high spots in well, this. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna set one thing clear right up front. I don't want it. I have not watched the entire thing. I. Basically, I sat and caught highlights of the three matches that interest me. Mm -hmm. And that was it because, you know. I mean, like, I haven't watched all of it either, so don't feel bad. Um, You know. But from what I've seen of it, there are some good spots in it. There are some good matches in it. Uh, Surprisingly, the uh, Moxley Janela match was actually a decent Wild West brawl. Okay. Now, I'm not going to totally shit on Janela. I know a lot of people are probably expecting that, but I'm not going to totally do it. That's a first. Yeah. Mark this date down. I do think that that match was way more competitive than it needed to be. Yeah. I think with, I mean, let's look at things right up front the way they are. Dean Ambrose is the hottest guy in wrestling right now. Or John Moxley, if you want to call him that. Let's face it. Every, he's going by Moxley. Well, actually, he's going by Moxley. He's dropped the John part. He's just Moxley. Oh, he dropped. Oh, he dropped the John part. Everyone calls him John, but like when they announced him coming to the ring, it was Moxley. Oh, okay. Now the announcer still called him that. John. I didn't but, catch that. But you know, so you know, and if anyone who hasn't seen the Moxley character, it's basically Dean Ambrose amped up. Pretty much. I mean, he uh, like Dean Ambrose it's, on crack. I it's mean, the, it's the non PG version. Yeah, he he's 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 a he's a as Janela said in his promo. Yeah, he's a he's a he's a very he's the same guy, but like I said, in, in a whole different way. This guy's crazy. He will do anything. He'll hurt you. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, when he when they, he did the spot of stomping Janela's hands and feet into the thumbtacks. Oh, he stomped them? No, he did. I, no, I, he, stomped, I thought, he stomped his hand. I'm sorry, he didn't do the feet. He stomped the hands. Yeah. Cause he stomped he, his cause hands I know he into did, the hand. I know he did the atomic drop, and his feet went into him. I yeah. saw that. Yeah, but then he's sitting there, and he's got his hands out, and he goes over and stomps them into the text. That, that's like, ah. But like I said, this guy's the hottest free free agent in wrestling right now. He was. Before he signed this, this exclu- I guess he signed an exclusive contract. Too. I don't know if he's exclusive or not because he's still working in Japan, so I don't so, know. This guy though is the ho- this the hottest. He's the hottest thing going right now in wrestling. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Because this guy literally, literally walked off WWE TV and right into AEW. Yeah, pretty much. And they got him wrestling a guy in a hardcore match for no reason, really. There really was no normal reason to it, and. It's like competitive. A, like a lot of these matches really didn't have a rhyme or reason to it. Now, if you're booking this, you need this monster guy. And I'm not monster. I don't want to use the term monster, but you want you you got this guy's crazy. He should have just came out there because you know Janela is a, is a death match guy. He could have and just got the crap kicked out of him. It was it was a decent match though. I, that's I what mean, I'm saying. It, it was good, but it was competitive, I mean, yeah. and it should not have been competitive and, and, at this stage. I mean, honestly, Janela surprised me a lot. I mean, I don't know much about Janela. I've seen him a little bit in PWG, a little bit here and there. I don't know that much about him. You know, I saw him in Combat Zone in the early Combat Zone days, but like, I don't know that much about him, honestly. Yeah, and that's kind of the same. They're they're trying to bring that back in with uh with. Ambrose. I mean, I'm sorry. I call him. I know. I, 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 oh, he's Mike's. Whatever. You know, the dude's. He's Dean Ambrose. Yeah, I without mean, a doubt, he's Dean Ambrose. And before anyone, anyone like, tries to give me any crap on this, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Well, not from. I wasn't born there, but I lived there for quite a long time. I was watching Moxley before anybody ever heard of him. I was seeing him live and in person. So I have been a fan of. Dean Ambrose, Mo, John Moxley, whatever you want to call him, I've been a fan of his for. We're going on 
13, 14, 15, 16 years. I mean, I've watched a little bit of his stuff from Combat Zone whenever he first, whenever he was there before he came to WWE, and he, and I even watched him in FCW. I seen him take a, a reciprocating saw to his forehead. Yeah, I saw that. That was nasty. You can literally see his bone yeah. of his skull. So, I mean, I've been a fan of Moxley for some time. What do you think of Darby Allen? Okay. <sighs> I think I opened up a can of worms here. Sorry. Okay. This guy. I think there is a place for him. I do not think he should go should have gone up against Cody Rhodes. But you gotta I admit I do not think he should have been as competitive with Cody Rhodes. But you have to admit it with it going to a time on the draw, it invests it, 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 the viewer is now more invested in who Darby Allen is. But that's the problem. The viewers are more invested in who Darby Allen is, but they care less about who Cody Rhodes is because who is this no name guy that came in here? Here's the Cody thing. Rhodes is supposed to be the the second coming of Jesus, here, and this guy went in there and just took him to a draw. Here's the thing: everyone knows who Cody is. Yes, but it no hurts. one knows who Darby is. It's not a matter of knowing or not knowing. It's a matter of it hurt Cody Rhodes. This is supposed okay. How? Right, explain how it hurt Cody Rhodes. Because right now in AEW, there are five things. But how how is losing? How is going to a? There's no clear cut winner in this match. So how is it going to a draw hurting Cody? Okay, let's go back in time. Okay, let's say that. Uh, okay, Rick, let's Rick find, Flair. Let's go back in time. Okay, it went to a draw with Sting and Flair. At the, first cla- at the first class, at the first but no one really knew who Sting was at that time. He, no, he had already been a mid card guy. He but had been no going one, for some time. But did anyone really care about Sting until he went that sixty minute Broadway with Ric Flair at Clash of Champions one, going up against going up against WrestleMania four? Did anyone really give a shit? And be but, honest. Yeah, there were fans. There was a market for Sting. Sting was moving up. Yeah, but, but here's now. The thing. Let's say now. Did let's that, put it another way: now, Is Darby Allen Sting? No, I'm not saying that. There you go. I'm not saying that. But at the same time, did did going that draw with Ric Flair hurt Flair? No, it did no, not. No, it prom- it promoted Sting. But that's the thing, Sting. And had that's already... exactly what this did for Darby. It promoted Darby. No, and I'll tell you why not. First off, Sting's got more talent in his pinky than this guy's got in his whole broken body. Secondly, at the same time, dude, you're going secondly, you're going off of 1980 perspective. Okay, I'm a ki- I'm a child of the 1990s. I'm more invested into who this Darby character is, and I'm interested to see what he's going to do next. What I mean, how it's, far is he going to go? No, see, that's what I'm saying. And it didn't hurt Darby Allen. This is what I'm saying. Why it took away from Cody Rhodes because this guy doesn't have the actual wrestling talent beyond no, being, a able, he's being a brawler. able to get thrown around the ring and looking like he gets broken in half he's a and doing stuff that's probably going to have him retired from wrestling within the next year. Like he reminds me of a younger version of Mick Foley. He really does. I'm sorry to say Without that, but he talent. does. Yeah, no, his, his the stunts, because remember Mick Foley used to do the Pepsi plunge or the nasty plunge, whatever. The nasty plunge, exactly. Yeah, where and he that's would what, jump off of the back and backwards that's what, and And that's actually head. what got him hired in WCW. Yeah, so, I mean, there is, and what did most of them look at as Mick Foley? As a stuntman. A glorified stuntman. So, you know, this guy, he could have been used in a different spot. You see, that's another, that's another one of the problems with this, is they're putting these guys in main event pictures against these main event talents that are like Cody Rhodes, Dean Ambrose, and Kenny Omega. You know, Chris Jericho, these guys. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Let's fast forward a little bit, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's say about two years. Can you see Darby Allin in a program with, let's say, a Chris Jericho? No. Why not? For one thing, the man's about 110 pounds soaking wet. But But could you foreseeably see it? Look at Spike Dudley. Whenever he was in ECW, he was what? 185 pounds going up against guys that were twice his size. But that was the that was the gimmick for him, and it worked because he was the third Dudley. But here's the thing. Darby Allen is kind of the same, cut from the same mode as Spike was. Yes, but he doesn't have Bubba Ray and Devon. No, he doesn't. But I think, honestly, with Sean Spears interfering in this match, it could be a start of a faction within AEW with now, Darby that, Allen and Sean Spears. If that and we'll see now this is where I and this was actually to me 
a possible high point. Because I've been saying for the past two two events of theirs that I've watched, even in clips, there has been no rhyme or reason to the matches. No, there hasn't been. But now we've got what, Sean Spears. Yeah. And he's the, the perfect 10 guy from Ty w- Dillinger. He was Ty, Ty Dillinger. Dillinger. Thank yeah. you. I, can't, I couldn't remember his name. And, you know, he has. Or Stan, a, that Shawn Michaels super kicked in the face that one time. Yeah. You know, so he. See, I just kicked Stan. Yeah, you know, it was. You know, with him coming in, that kind of could start something between him and Cody Rhodes. But I can honestly see. And. I, I mean, there are seeds there for a possible tag team with Darby and Shawn. Well, see, what I'm looking at is with, I mean, they've got Joey Janela. They've got this uh, Dar- uh, Darby Allen, And they have Jimmy they've Havoc. They've got Jimmy Havoc. They, for what it's worth, they do have Moxley. He's a you know, those, former Those deathmatch. guys honestly could form a faction. They well, really I'm not could. Looking, I'm not looking at a faction. See, that's what I'm saying is people forget. They think all wrestling has to be together at one time, and it doesn't. I'm not saying that at these all. Guys, you know, these guys could come up if, if AEW wanted to do it. back. Remember, one of the big things back in the Attitude Era was what? The hardcore title. Exactly. Why don't they have a hardcore title? They probably are going to. See, as far as we know now, right now, guys, they have a tag title, a woman's title, and in and, and, and discussion of doing a woman's tag title. You know, that would work out great, you know, and have this own division. Have its division and have it going. And when you go into hardcore, size really doesn't matter because you have your equalizers. Yeah. You know, so yeah. If, and if you look at uh, Havoc and uh, Allen... They're both pretty well, basically built the same man. Actually, if you want to, if you really want to look at it, pretty much the same character. In essence, yes. I mean, even the same the way they come out to the ring, you know, the, and the face. Well, uh, Darby has the face paint. Darby does the face paint. Uh, Havoc does a mask. Yeah, basically. When he's coming out, so you know that's, and I'm saying, you know, they could do that. They could, and that could work out good. I don't think, you know, that needs to be separated. It's kind of like a tag team competitor going for a world title. A singles world title just right out the gate. Okay, now you know now if we're gonna go into fancy booking on this, let's say Darby Allen and Jimmy Havoc become a tag team. What do you do with them? That would work out okay to an extent, but sooner or later. Okay, this is the way they would because because of their size, because of the lack of actual ring ring ability. Sooner or later, all of their major wins are going to have to come down to one thing. Weapon. Something to equalize. Behind the referee's back. Exactly. But here's what I'm thinking. You book them like that. Okay. They get a substantial wins. They end up possibly winning the tag title by shenanigans. You can do well, yeah. that. And, because they would work out much better as a heel and team. Then, and then, honestly, what would happen to break them up is that one of them would get a shot at the AEW title. The other one gets jealous, and that begins a program between those two. Yeah, and something like that could work out and because be it a, has and before, that'd be, and that'd be a very bloody, violent program. Yeah, and it would work out, and it, and that's you know that's what AEW has got to kind of do to set itself apart from, because as I've said m- multiple times, but you uh, cannot beat Vince McMahon at Vince McMahon's own game. No, you can't. So you've got to be different. Yeah. This would make them different, and it would make them stand out. Yeah, while still keeping in the, in the integrity of. You know, you could have one of them. Okay, have them both have a tournament go. Or uh, well, they're doing a tournament for the tag titles. No, 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 no. I'm talking about we're doing the fantasy book, and we're talking. Like, okay. So let's say. Um, okay, perfect example. They have like a uh, either a, a tournament or a battle royal. Right. And they both look at each other and go, "Well, are are you going to go into? The, no, 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 no. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Or what? But they go behind each other's back, put their names in. Or what they could do, and then you have one of them go over, or what they could win, or it. what they can do, what they did in the Attitude Era back in the day with Sunday Night Heat. Remember, before before WrestleMania 15, they had a they had like a 15 man or whatever battle royal on Heat, mm. and the last two will become a tag team. These two could already be in a rivalry, have them become a tag team, and then to spite themselves, they become tag team champions. Yeah, that could be something like, and you could even have it even going as far as like you know. Well, you can have like throwing Darby Allen throwing the havoc at somebody. You could do, you know, have them where they're basically fighting each other, but still kind of. Yeah. And I would be glad to see them go over the Young Bucks because I can't stand them anyway. I think the Young Bucks would be okay with doing with with, with doing the job for them too. Yeah. No. I really do because, like, like let's just say let's just be honest here. 
the Young Bucks, Cody, Kenny, they're your four main guys. Yeah. So let's just let's just say that they're okay with doing the business here, doing the job. I'm all for Darby Allen and Jimmy Havoc to become a team and go over them. You know, like I said, that and they would work out good there. They would do something. You know, that would that would be something to push them, and it would be it would work out fine. And that's exactly what I think they could do. Now, there is one other match that I want to get into, and it's I know we were talking about this before, and this is this one's going to be this one pissed me the fuck off. <laughs> they are killing quite possibly one of their biggest draws in the women's division in Nyla Rose. Like I mean, dude, they could have put her in a two-minute squash against these two chicks. It should have been a two-minute squash. It should have been a three-minute squash. It should have been a squash match. And to have her lose, that is unbelievable. The whole time they're talking about her, they're talking about, and I mean, okay, let's first off, let's start off this match the way it started. You had them doing the, you know, the Japanese girls doing and their and, and, and everything. So Nyla, Nyla gets a big smile on her face, and she shakes the hands with the one. She shakes, shakes the hands with the other, grabs her by the back of the head, and throws her out of the ring, turns around, grabs the other, and she just starts beating the crap out of both of them. And then the, the two girls look at each other, look at her, look at and they start attacking her. Well, that works because you got it. Now it's a two-on-one match. And, this, and the, uh, the announcers actually say this. This is basically a two-on-one match now. In essence, you know, yeah. At some point, they're going to have to compete against each other, but the main target needs to be take out the, the biggest, monster. Take out the biggest dog in the fight. Well, they're trying to do Irish whips, and she's just pulling them and smacking them around. She at one time slammed them both on the ground, does a double splash, and pins them both at the same time, and they barely, you know, like they, they me and the, you, me and you agreed before we went, before we did this, yeah. that um, it should have been a two minute squash, not an eighteen minute match. And yeah, this match goes eighteen minutes, and Nyla gets pinned. Yeah, you, dude, they're this, this, and this like and even, like and like the commentators are saying. Oh, her and Awesome Kong, her and Awesome yeah, Kong, they're, they're her and Awesome Kong. Uh, po- the possibility of a match coming up with Awesome Kong. Well, how Here's is she supposed thing. to be Here's legitimate my... competition for Awesome Kong when she can't even be two girls that are ha- not even the size of her thigh? My point. My point exactly. If I was booking this, if I was in charge, okay, let's say I'm Cody right now and I have a little dog named Pharaoh. Um, <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> anyway, but if I'm booking this, I'm going to have her go over two minute squash. You know, it's like, here's the thing. You have the Rockets, right? Hmm. And I explained this to you earlier. You have the Rockets and they're doing their thing. And you put Nyla Rose at the end of that line. Who's everyone going to look at? Yeah, she's going to be the center of attention. You know, this is this is basically what I'm looking at. And for those of you who don't know, and I'm sure most of you who don't know this probably would not be listening to this podcast. But Nyla Rose is also the first transgender Exactly. Female competitor. Exactly. This is we have just ended Pride Month. You know they should push that, and this girl should go in and just destroy dominate. People. Dominate. We're gonna now. Like if I'm booking this, this is the way I've got it going. She is only going to compete in triple threat matches. Yeah. And she is going to decimate. Now I'm going to leave the girls that they got going in that they want to be like their main competitors. Right. I would leave in, I'd leave out that the eighty year old Smiley Kylie or whatever the hell her name is. I think she's twenty four actually. Well, she looks like she's about one hundred and ten. Could be the makeup, anyways. Yeah. yeah, and she gives her the character gives me the impression of one of them creepy PBS kids show hosts. I think that she did the gimmick before Bailey, though. It don't matter. It don't work. People are <laughs> people are used to it from Bailey. The the Dennis girl. Oh yeah, uh, and, Adam Cole's Adam Cole's baby. Uh, and Brandy Rhodes, I know she's going to be one of the big figuring in at and, some point. And Kong. And, well, I would leave Kong out. I wouldn't have Kong. I would have Kong disappear. But like here, but, but like so me now, and you both agreed that if you want your woman's title to have some legitimacy, you'll put it on Kong. Well, see, this is what I would do. You could even have Kong. No, no, no. I'd leave it alone. I'd have leave Kong alone. Okay. I would have Nyla annihilate the women's roster and i mean co- totally go in there and destroy everyone oh you definitely get her probably since do, they're doing this once do, a month once or, or they're only doing these they're doing these like once a month or every two weeks do what do to nyla what they started to do with naya in awe yeah. and what they did with kong and tna i'm even i'm even going more on uh maybe even like a goldberg-esque streak do you really want to do that though no that's what i'm saying goldberg-esque 
where I'd have her taking on so kind of like an Oscar. So kind of like Oscar wasn't in, in in NXT. Yeah, Oscar. Oh uh, no 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 no. I, because Oscar actually did competitive matches. I wouldn't have her doing competitive. I would have her like Nia, uh, Nia Jax in WWE, Kong in the beginning of TNA, and just have her come in, just beating the crap out of uh, another good one. Another good example of it is Braun Strowman. Yeah. You know stuff like that, and have her as the monster heel. Right. And then have them win their title. Have them go. You know. Whoever's going to win it, I might even go Brandy Rhodes because she's already got the tie. She's already got the tie to Kong because Kong and her, she brought Kong out. So I would have Brandy get it. Yeah. And then I would have Nyla challenge and shock, shock. Brandy would get decimated. Brandy would get destroyed. Brandy would get hurt. Actually, what I would think here is have Nyla get so pissed off that she gets disqualified. No. But the, w- but the reason why, and I'll tell you the reason why, is because Nyla could be your chaser in this. Remember what we talked about before with Roman being the chaser? Yeah. Hear me out, okay? Mm-hmm. You have Nyla just demolish her, get disqualified, and that could lead to a Awesome Kong Nyla feud, which will eventually lead to Awesome Kong and Brandy falling apart down the line. Well, see, this is the way I'm doing I'm thinking it. I have... Nyla annihilate Brandy and hurt her. You know, we're working it here. Not not legitimate, but I mean like literally like we're working yeah, an injury here. She would be coming in in a, ca- a leg cast, something like that, talking my career's probably over this. Possibly a broken never, neck. Yeah, something like that to where I may never be able to wrestle again, blah 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 blah. And then you and then and you have Kong come in for no, revenge. You have Nia, Nyla, I keep on now since I've brought up Nia Jax, I want to keep on saying Nia instead of Nyla. <laughs> no, it's hard, right? Yeah. You have her come in and you know what you do? You do the Kurt Henning. What's that? You have her work that damn cast over. Oh, definitely. Remember how many years Kurt Henning wore that cast on his arm? Right. Yeah. You, know, you know, just and have her have Nyla just maybe even break the cast. Right. And then get on the mic. If I didn't retire you then, I did now and walk out. Right. Well, you that can have was, Cody come in. Cody's distraught. His wife heard blah, blah, blah. Next time she comes out bragging and she comes out. Who, who's, who's coming at me now? Who do I get to destroy tonight? Come on. Come on. And then Kong's music. No, would it be even better? Have Cody come out and say, you hurt my wife. You put her out. I have a surprise for you. He walks away. Kong's music hits. Well, see, I wouldn't even use Cody at the time. But see, but see, it would make sense for Cody to come well, out yeah, do that. Well, yeah, it would. Because any any man out there is gonna want is gonna want revenge for what happened to his wife. And since he can't physically put his hands on Nyla, well, he could do that promo. Could, I yeah. can't physically put my out or not can't. I won't. Yeah. Always have have him take the high ground. Yeah. I won't. I won't put my. But hands I got on, someone who will. But I got someone that will. And, and insurance policy. And Kong's and music then Kong comes out. Comes out. And then and then Cody would just point to Nyla and say, get her. No, I wouldn't even. I, after her music hits, I would have Kong march just straight into that ring, right up into her face. We've got the stare down. We've got the show, you know, and I'd have Kong hit her right in the mouth, just straight. Bam. And Nyla don't sell. She smiles. Bam. Back. Kong don't sell. So we have a true clash of titans you have godzilla against mega death over here yeah it's and they're just going at it now this is the one nyla gets frustrated she's never met someone that can match her in strength match her in size match her in every way but kong kong can't get the upper hand jack uh, nyla rose can't get the upper hand this is the one she gets disqualified in she loses it. She grabs a chair. She starts sw- singing, swinging for the fences. She doesn't care. So now she hit her. She she might even hit a referee. Hit a referee. Whatever. Rhodes comes out. Then you're careless. You're reckless. You're suspended thirty days. And then and, he, and stripped then, of the title. And then what she can do is whenever he goes to check on Kong, she turns him around and gives him a press slam or something. Yeah, we could have we could have something like that. But I'm thinking, you know, to make just, her seem like she's like a rebellious person, have her take out one of the one of the EV, one of the executive vice presidents. Yeah. So this is all working into 
Now, we're already probably, what, three months down the road, four months down the road. At least. This is all working into. Now, she is suspended for 30 days. But she gets Stripped back in the building. of the title. She gets in the building once. He comes out and tells Or we won't even have Rhodes. Somebody else, even, even have the Young Bucks, Rhodes, Omega, everybody come out. You come back into the building one more time. You lose your job. Or what she can, we're going to fire. Or you. what she can do. Remember the outsiders back in the day, how they would come in through the building. Yeah. What what the, what she can do is say, well, you can't kick me out. I have a ticket. Yeah, but I, you know, I'm going. I'm still going. I'm like, just saying that's yeah, what I would. I'm do. saying, see by by them coming out in force and telling her if you come in here again, you're going to be fired. That shows that these guys are kind of nervous about what she's going to do. Okay, we've already had her take out Kong. We've had her take out possibly ending Brandy's career. We've even had her attack Cody Rhodes. Right. This, when you see, what, four of the biggest names in their company comes out to face this one woman, what does that do to her? That says everybody's scared. Right. They don't know what she's going to do. She's unpredictable. And we have police, not security. Police. We have cops come in and escort her out of the arena. With hands on their guns, possibly, yeah, just know, to make it. Even have one of them with taser ready, you know, something like that, just to make it even more. We throw a tournament. Kong is your new champion. The 30 days are over. On the day, on the uh, on the On the day of the, on the day of the finals, the 30 days is up. And Nyla returns. She comes through the crowd. She cuts through the crowd. They come out. You're still suspended. No, I'm not. My 30 days are up, and I want my title. Or, now, or what you can do, you can have Nyla's music play. No, well, hear, hear me out. Hmm. Okay? You have Nyla's music play. It distracts Kong after she wins the match. This is after she's won the match. Hmm. Okay? After she's got the belt, you have Nyla's music play. All right? It distracts Kong for a second. She's confused. Nyla cuts through the crowd, hits her with a spear. Okay? Holds up the woman's title, and then yells at and then yells at Kong. It's mine. I'm taking your spot. We'll see. I'm going more, still keeping her kind of outsiderish. I mean, and it's still outsiderish. You know, but... like I said, as soon as I wouldn't have, I wouldn't even have her get to the ring. I would have her get to the apron, and then like, oh crap, oh crap, and have just the flood again come out here. No, 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 no. You're still suspended. We but, told you if you come back, and then that's but do when you it comes really want to have? Out. Two big, two two big pull aparts. See, that's the thing. She wouldn't do a pull apart. She just smiles. Okay, I can see She's that. The, and she looks at them. Well, I can uh -uh. see it. I can see it either or. She you goes. Know she gets her over, and then she looks at Kong, and she goes, "I never lost that. You don't have it. That's my title. You know, you didn't beat me." Right. You never won that title. I never lost it. That's mine. Right. We can have Kong, not Dodger, because you're not going to weaken Kong like that. We can have Kong going, oh, then come on in and get it. And then that's when they break in. No, 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 no. You're not doing this match. Not yet. Then look, you could even have her. You got to remember. And then this Nala's, is, and this then, is AEW. Okay. We're doing this by the right ways. You want a challenge for that title because you were stripped of it. Start. You got to start at the bottom and work your and way. And then back Nyla's up. first match on TV: squash, 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 squash. And then it gets down to the number one contendership between her and Britt Baker. Okay, hmm. I would have that one be a competitive match. I would have yeah, Nyla gotta, look a little bit look a little bit like she's weakened. Yeah, you've got to have that because you know you can't have two main people and be that's it that nobody else is going. You've got it. So yeah, Britt Baker, she's going to. It's going to start off looking like, oh, God, this is a squash match. But exactly. Then, but in the common thing, then Britt Baker is going to come back. She's going to start fighting. She's going to get in, and she's going to get the upper hand a few times. Yeah. She's going to get her close to maybe, but Nyla's going to pull it out. Yeah. Because we're so like, like, to... Like, you don't want Nyla to look too weak, but you want her to look at least somewhat. Yeah. You want her to look to where it's believable that someone could possibly beat her that isn't Awesome Kong. You know? And then... You know, you've got the buildup. you got the fact that, and Kong is going to come out and go, yeah, you've torn through this, you've done this, you've done that. But if you remember right, your record, and this is stealing from Kevin Nash, 
your record might be impressive, but it, it does have one loss in the loss column, and I'm your one. Yeah. I remember him looking at Goldberg because <laughs> right. you talk about your – you talk – it is. Well, you better remember, I'm your one. Or what she, or what she could say, well, you've beaten a lot of people, and they're all on your hit list. You've, you've, you've pretty much accomplished your hit list, but there's one name not on that list, and that's mine. You know, that, like I said, when you, when you put it right out there, I'm your one. That's showing that she's got one blemish, and it's calm. And, you know, we can have, but yeah, but and you also, didn't and also me. we can have that happen during the contract signing for that match. Yeah. And then that's where you have the big pull apart and that'd be, and that'd be how you end that episode of AEW. Exactly. Then you get the pull apart and then you got the, everybody trying to keep, keep calm in the ring. And then you have the announcers going, Oh my God, what's going to happen next? That, uh, that's actually one from Tony Giovanni. He said, those are the greatest words ever uttered in the history of professional wrestling. Oh my God, what's going to happen next week? Because that makes everybody wonder, oh, what is going to happen? Or that could be like your go home show for a pay per view and be like, oh my God, what's going to happen at, let's say, double or nothing? Yeah. Like it. <laughs> well, oh my God, what's going to happen at double or nothing? Tune in, find out who's going to be the champion. And you Dude, know, I'm, I'm pumped up now. Yeah. It's, not, it's not even happening. Yeah, not even happening because AEW is screwing the pooch. Like, I'm pumped up now just wanting to see that match because of that promo I just did. You know, <laughs> AEW is, well, what are we calling it, Mr. Mr. Fluffy Duck in the poop shoot. Pretty much. You know, they just, they, they're, you know, I get and it. Like, and like, and this like, is, this and is, like uh, going back to the whole booking part of it, you can have them to literally do a pull apart and then they, and then they take out security. They take out everybody, the entire roster, just take them all out. And then you have the announcers go, oh, my God, what's going to happen? Double or nothing. What's yeah, going to happen you... Sunday? They're not going to stop until one of them dies. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm doing this, literally, the last thing you see before the screen goes black is them just tearing security. Like you said, you know, getting security out of the way, getting everybody cleared, and then them getting their hands on each other again. Yeah. You're, and. Have them just swing for the fences. I mean, just totally, just it, where it, you know, it's have like, it look, have it have it look like a hockey fight. Exactly. As soon as and you know, it's like as soon as you see them get a hold of each other, maybe two punches get thrown, the screen goes black. Yeah, you're gonna have people like, holy crap, they're gonna be after this. And you know, AEW has got to start doing doing stuff like this. And I'm gonna I'm gonna come right out and I'm gonna say it right here and right now. There is one major problem with AEW. What's that? They're hiring all their fucking friends. Pretty much. And they want all of their friends to have this, this like, oh, look here, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And these guys can be the nicest guys in the world. And I'm not trying to put anybody down. You know, I'm saying go for it. Great. You got your friends working for you. That's, you know, hey, you got your own wrestling company. Why not have your friends working for you? Right. But everyone can't be in a top spot. You know, like, as they pointed out with the girl that beat, um, uh, I believe it was the one Rio or whatever, or Rina, Rio or whatever, that actually pinned Nyla Rose in oh, that match. Know. She's Kenny Omega's favorite partner for intergender tag matches. Yeah. So you're saying it right there. Your announcers are saying why she won. Yeah. She's a friend of Kenny Omega. Yeah. You know, you had still one of the high points of the shows every time they do it, MJF. When he's in the first one, he's kicking the crap out of this guy. And he goes, he looks at him and he goes, you're worthless. You're just a favor to the young bucks. Pretty much. You cannot build your company around doing favors for your friends. No, you can't. Sorry. About no. that. At some point, this is, this has got to stop or it's going to kill their company before it gets going. Yeah. And let's face it. They got, and they keep talking about the fact that they've got a guy that pulled strings and got him on TV quick on a major network. We're not talking you know, four in the morning on the, the, you know, TV channel, a guy channel. We're not talking impact here. You know, he, which is now going to access. He pulled strings and got him a major network deal. This guy is a billionaire. He does not, did not become a billionaire by making stupid decisions. Yeah. If they he's can, being, he's being sold something. Well, no, what he's getting is his son's looking at him and going, Daddy, I want to be a pro wrestling promoter. Okay, son, go buy you a company. And that's exactly it. But like But as soon as this guy as soon as he keeps going up to Daddy going, 
well, Daddy, we, we lost a lot of money this month. Daddy's going to sooner or later look at him and go, well, well, then it's time to close the pro wrestling company. Like, here's my thing. Like, the way we have this laid out between Nyla and Kong, that could be your main event. Yeah. And that should be your main event because people are invested in it. And then if you, and this is, this is the kicker. Hong, uh, Hong. <laughs> <laughs> I have just created a new character that's going to make a debut as well. Hong. <laughs> no. Like Orange Julius? <laughs> yeah, just like Orange Julius. Kong. You said it right this time. <laughs> she could actually turn heel. Yeah. Let's have Rose we beat Kong this next time. We actually get her at the pay-per-view. She pins her. But here's the thing. How about we have this be a prolonged program? It is. But hold up. And we actually have Kong get herself disqualified. In the first one. In the first one. No. I would have her I would have I would have her win, and this is why. Because now we're going to we're going to turn both. Kong becomes heel, Rose becomes face. How so? Lay it out the, to me. The only reason you beat me is because we all know I was wrestling a man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You have Kong attack the LGBT part of it. Oh, tell the truth, brother. Tell the truth, man. You, you know no woman here could beat me, and I didn't lose to a woman. I lost to a man. Have her hit that. Well, now Rose is going to come. No, I'm a woman, Dan. Da, 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 da. Kong's going to keep throwing it. We're going to get heat for that. <laughs> well, no, I, I mean, I've never... I don't have a problem with it, by no. the way. By the way, we love the LG, uh, LBGT and why, community. And that's why I say that's that's what would change Kong. Have her attack that. You know, you have an unfair advantage. Right, cause because you're, you're, you're and, biologically a male. You know, always have her call and have her call Nyla Rose a man. Always have her call her a man. Always, the, you know, it, it's going to give Kong some heat. And she and I, I'm sorry, Kong. I mean, I know I've I've heard so many people talk. I've seen her in there. She seems like a sweet, sweet person. But that would definitely. But this get would her. definitely give her. Let's face it. As soon as she looked at the camera and said, "I didn't lose," there were you. Everyone knows there's not one woman in here that can beat me. And then what we can and do? And I didn't lose to a woman. I lost to a man. And what we can do is we can go southern with it, old school southern wrestling, and have a lawyer show up. Hold up, hold up. This is where it gets really stupid, but it's going to be hilarious for a second. And then say, well, Nyla shouldn't be woman's champion. She's not a woman. We could go if you wanted to really get heat. And then this would also make, let's have, uh, you know, Omega or the, because I think, I think Rhodes is still trying to be a heel. I think, uh, I think he's a tweener. Yeah, he might be a tweener. But anyway, you know, have one of them come out and be like, no. That's a woman. You know, she is a woman. You know, and have her. This would make the company, first off, huge support of LGBTQ. Yeah. And it would use her being a transgender competitor without making it. I mean, it would kind of be the same thing she faces on the streets every day. It would make it more. More, edgy, of, a, more, more of a real. More real. That, you know, how many, how many times. And I'm also, I'll, I will say this. I have a, a very dear friend. I say this is my best friend in the world. I will always say that. I love her to death. She is transgender. So I, I, this is something that is near to me. When I, I when I see people going against this, and I see, like the people, oh, that's that's a man going into the women's room. No, you know, my Antonia is a woman. I love that woman more than anybody on earth. She is one of the sweetest people you ever know. So this is something that actually does hit home with me. Because it's something that if you're against her, you're against me automatically. And that's the way, and that's, you know, so I, I can see them using it in, in kind of drawing positive and have, then you could even have like the guys coming out and supporting her, the other women in the roster come out. And then you that's, can have, and then you can a, have MJF be a smart ass. Well, yeah, th but that would be his thing. But I mean, that, you know, you could have the other women come out on the roster and go, no, she's our women's champion, you know? And, and get that vote this. of support. She's going to have the vote of support of the, and all of this, you know, so we can make it a big thing. And, you know, it would, it would promote it to another level. 
And that would, and that's just seriously that that if a if anyone from AEW is listening to this podcast, do this, and I guarantee you, ratings will shoot through the roof. Yeah, people will be invested, and you will finally do something correct instead of Deputy Dan bullcrap and Orange Julius yeah. and <laughs> no and, more Orange crushing from Orange and, Julius and 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 the, and the Walmart dude and and Luchasaurus wearing the fuck all yeah. that book this. I'm paying to watch it. Make it happen. It needs to happen. Do it now. If you don't do it now, I'm suing you. You know, it's something that... The, Sorry, went on a tangent there. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, but, I mean, it's just something that would make this this company into a whole other light. And it's something that... Another thing that would actually separate it from the oh, WWE. it would definitely separate from the WWE. Because, because let's the WWE is not doing anything for the LBGC community except the, for the whole Sonya Deville thing. That's beside the point. Yeah, but that and and see that's that's their main problem. They don't actually. They had Darren Young. Yeah, he was a good competitor. He was great in ring, and in what did they? They were like Orlando you know, Jordan. They were embarrassed to. I remember one of his things. He almost quit over it was the fact that on this red carpet thing, they were taking pictures of all the couples coming in, and they tried to get his husband to step to the side. And he's like, wait a minute, you're, you're going to take pictures of all these couples, but you're not going to take a picture of me and my husband? And then they were, oh, okay, and have him get, and then they cut him out of the picture. You know, it, because they didn't want to show that. You know, the only time the WWE has actually done anything with the anything to do with homosexuality or any of that, they've done it as a joke. I mean, the biggest one I think in recently has been the marriage between Billy and Chucky. Oh, good God, that was bad. That was horrible. The whole gimmick was horrible, and the fact it that wasn't it is, even neither one of them were freaking. It wasn't gimmick. even that, dude. They they did a bait and switch on Glad. You know, it's it's been, but I mean, that's that's what they've been like, using I mean, it as a punchline I mean, because literally that whole angle got publicized in the gay community yeah you know what i'm saying and then they did a bait and switch on smackdown and said we're not gay we don't have nothing against gay people but we're not gay yeah that's what i'm saying they used to i mean and they've had openly gay or bisexual competitors and that is something that they don't want to acknowledge so not i think only- a lot of it has to do with it being a publicly traded company no, no, that would that that wouldn't you know. I think a lot of I think a lot of the projection is probably because of that. How, and that you know, and plus the fact that Vince is just Vince. Yeah, and I mean most of the time he he's just trying to think of a new ways of doing incest lines. Pretty, I mean, come on, dude, he came with a with, with a whole angle when Stephanie was pregnant, and have it be revealed that he's the father of the kid. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, then she nixed that idea. And then he was like, okay, what about Shane? Let's make Shane the father. Yeah. So. Well, Vince Russo had the same idea in WCW with the whole David Flair and Stacey Keebler angle being married, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. And it was supposed to be revealed later that Stacey Keebler and David were actually brother and sister, that Rick had an affair. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, Vince, try, and Vince sort of was hinting at the same thing and didn't want to do that with Triple H and Pretty Stephanie. Much. Pretty much. But you know, so see, you but would set like, yourself and aside. then like, and then like they 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 tease this angle with Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, and then uh, and then as soon as people realize, oh, they're teasing a lesbian angle, they drop it. Well, yeah, because they're not lesbians. No, because uh, I, I, I think I, I think Sonya Deville is actually engaged to be married to Seth Rollins' ex. Okay, so she is a lesbian. Yeah, she's she's straight up lesbian. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's yeah. Well, see, that's and that's what I'm but saying. But Mandy isn't. See, I don't think. Well, see, and, and that's what it, they would be making it. They would be doing this. You didn't know that? A, no, I don't. I haven't really paid any attention to. Like her attire is like gay pride all the way around. A lot, like her WrestleMania attires last year was okay. literally rainbow. I didn't watch WrestleMania. Yeah, it was literally rainbow. Okay. And like, well, and like her newest merch is like. Rainbow attire, so it's rain- pride. Yeah, attire. yeah. Okay. Well, see, now I wouldn't have. I don't have trouble with that. See, that's what I'm saying. Is you know, if you use it, like if you have a gay, like with Darren Young, he could have come out and been something supportive in the gay community. You know what's messed up? He was a he was a good competitor. He he needed a better character. I mean, the what was the million dollar players or whatever? Uh, 
I forgot what they were called. With ten, with titles, prime time so, players. Prime time players. They used that's to say a, billions they, of dollars. Yeah, billions of dollars. Billions of dollars. Yeah. That, that's and then they did the whole thing, make Darren great again. When was he great? Yeah, you know, he needed a better gimmick. Had to be great first. But well, he, he actually <laughs> I mean, was he, a really I mean, good in he, I mean, he's a good wrestler, but they stuck him with the bull crap fucking gimmicks that didn't work. Yeah, they did. They were they were bad. Yeah, you got to look at the door for referee discretion. <laughs> it's AEW, dog. <laughs> you, you, one. <laughs> <laughs> what comes after one? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, luck, luckily the ref- Haven't you noticed that every time I say a, a messed up word, I look over a little? Yeah, because, it, uh, yeah, you're doing that. But luckily so far, the referee is Because now the still signs figured. are moved over there. <laughs> and there. Oh, oh yeah, it used to be behind us here. But, yeah, uh, yeah, the referee is still trying to figure out what comes up, what comes after potato. I think it's one potato, two potato. <laughs> what comes after two potato? Yeah. When oh, I yeah. get old and cannot count, I want to be a referee. <laughs> <laughs> and AEW is hiring. They're hiring like hotcakes right now. Yeah. To send your, to send your qualifications to Cody at, at Cody.com. <laughs> I don't know if that's really a website or not. And also, uh, if you do, if you pass kindergarten, you can work mm-hmm. at AEW. <laughs> Spelling is not necessary, and neither is vision. So, you know. so Vince Russo, you can get a job, brother. <laughs> Just letting you know right now. Just call Cody up. I'm, I'm sure you guys number. <laughs> <I doubt that. laughs> uh, no, Cody is like, no, I ain't even getting near that. Because I mean, come on, he started off as a magazine writer, couldn't even spell. <laughs> Well, that is true, you know. Well, and actually, he, and then he became lead creative. <laughs> you want to hear the funniest thing of it all? What? The absolute funniest thing of it all. With Vince Russo, who do you think is his, we, well, let's call it his arch enemy? Jim Cornette. Hands down. Wouldn't you say Jim Cornette? I think, I think Jim Cornette's Batman and he's Joker. Yeah. I wouldn't get Joker. Actually, that actually fits. No, that actually, that analogy fits. Because you know. Joker's more badass, though. You know who got. How got Vince Russo into working in the wrestling business at all? Was it him? He was a third party that was hired to help distribute videos for, I can't remember what it was that Cornette was producing, and he helped distribute these videos. The guy, he went to another person and he said, Hey, I got this guy in New York that'll help distribute them. He'll get them made up, da 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 da. And then Russo screwed them over. Wow. So the bad blood goes back that far. <laughs> and the thing of it is, Cornette didn't know about it until like last year. Oh. This guy was talking and he was like, yeah, it's like that guy you had in New York. And he goes, oh, you know, that was Vince Russo, didn't you? What was his reaction? <laughs> I, I, if you, if you, you'd have to look up the podcast. Is it on what, which podcast? That's when I, it's one of, it's on the experience. Okay. I looked I, it up. I've got. But oh, to think, he created Vince Russo. That's he t- got him working. In so the in essence, business. so in essence, what happened here? It goes back to the Batman eighty nine version, exactly. Because <laughs> Jack Napier killed his parents, he becomes Batman, and then Batman fucking just drops him. <laughs> Again, referee discretion. <laughs> We're good. Yeah. He's not counting the 10 yet. We're good. <laughs> yeah, just as long as we do not kick the, get kicked out of here. If we get kicked out of here, we're screwed, dude, until you get your computer. <laughs> well, actually, and that might be tonight. So that could be good. Oh, man. If I knew what was going on. Oh, man. That sucks. <laughs> what? I don't know. It's stuff that I'm thinking about. But uh, I was just thinking, you know, if it was going to be tonight, I, I got an idea for something. But then it's like, well, no. The I AEW could. official is not counting yeah. us down here, okay? We can do a a, a hour and 15-minute triple team right now. <laughs> yeah, that and that seems to be a... Okay, that's another thing they need to do. They got to stop that crap. They really do. And they also, I get, it, I get that they're going tag team heavy, but they need they're some doing, singles matches. They're doing what Jim Crockett Promotions did back in the day. Because if you look at Jim Crockett Promotions back in the day, it was mostly there tag was a team. lot of tag. Teams. It was mostly tag. But this team is heavy. the thing: even a tag team match with a tag team, you know, one tag team and two tag teams, and they fight each other. That's different. Then you, but they're always doing triple threats or quad, you know, fatal four ways or something. They've always got it like kinda, it kinda, it's kind of like Japan in that in that regard. Yeah, Cause, but it's cause also really you, cl- it's really clustered. Because if you look over in Japan, majority of the matches are what either six man tags, yeah. triple threat tags. Well, see, I can, regular tags. I can see six man. Okay, I can see six man. And although they need to lay back from the six man because they got to do something. Okay, the six man goes with free bird rules. Yeah, and that's that's fine. And that works, especially if you're doing a heel team. 
heel teams work great with free, free bird rules because if everyone remembers right, the free birds were heels. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, no, I mean, every... every In world class, it started off as good guys. Until they turned on the Von Erics. Well, what happened was, uh, I think it was uh, Carrie against Flair in a cage or whatever, and um, Flair hits Carrie from behind, He and he bumps into Michael, and then Terry Gordy took the cage door and just said, yeah. you mm-hmm. white boy, and bashed his brains in. Yeah, you know, and that turned them against the Von Erichs, and they had a great feud with that. They went into Memphis and had the feuds. They were in uh, WCW and Crocker Promotions. Cup of coffee. Ev- cu- it was a cup of coffee everywhere. Yeah, because they didn't work long. Although I, got, I still got to say, my, uh, P.S. Michael Hayes one of the greatest promos ever to walk the face of the earth. Yeah, I mean he's I mean he's a good he's a good hype man, but he couldn't take a bump or the crap. But see, that's that's why he worked, and that's the way the three the, even look at the new day, the modern Freebirds. In essence, yeah, you know. They're the well, they're the longest running three man team, other than the Freebirds. True. Xavier Woods is the mouthpiece. The man's but, great on the mic, but he can also perform. He's good. No, he's yeah, he's good in the ring, but his main job was a mouthpiece. Yeah, pretty much. You know, he's really had to step up now I legit, that Kofi Kingston is the world heavyweight champion. I legit thought that um, when the New Day formed, I thought it was supposed to be like another nation of domination. I thought it was going to go that way too. I thought I, when I actually when I was seeing the promos for the original New Day, I looked at that and I thought, well, this is going to last about six months. Because like I literally thought it was going to be another nation of domination, I, just not with all those guys. Yeah, you know. And my hat is off to Kofi, Biggie, and Xavier. Those two guys took a gimmick that was destined to fail and worked and ran with it. And not only did they run with it. They scored every they touchdown. They scored touchdowns every time they touched it. They've done great. That I mean, it has revived. If and I mean, no, it's no revita- disrespect. It's to revitalized Kofi. Kofi. It really has. Kofi well, is a incredible competitor. He always has been, but he's always been just this he, close. He to was the it. he was the Shelton Benjamin syndrome. Exactly. You know, the, he was a great undercard guy, and he had the potential to go in main event. They just never quite got there. That's the problem with Shelton. Shelton yes. is, he has the ability to be a main event quality guy. He just can't talk. No. Now, Kofi was okay. But if you mic. stick him with the manager, he can go places. Yeah. I mean, and, well, you got to remember, uh, Kofi actually, he can talk. And he does have a quick mind about him. He was the one that hit with the Usos. The only reason why you're relevant is your wife's on Total Divas. Right. Yeah, that was that was a that was a low, low blow. Oh, definitely. That was oh, that one was good though. But I mean, like, if you were to stick Shelton and that's with, what if you were to stick Shelton with like let's say a Paul Heyman. Yeah. He can go places. Or Kurt Angle. Like, I don't know what the deal is with him now. He's acting really weird. They they should have put him back with Kurt Angle. Well, uh, Kurt was leaving. Yeah, but I mean, if they could have offered him the manager position, you know, they why could have tagged him for a while. Why didn't Why didn't Jason Jordan and, and Shelton team up? That would be a pretty good tag team, actually. Yeah, well, they tried to do it with uh, Chad Gable, didn't they? Yeah, but mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, but mm-hmm. yeah, I, 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 and I, I kind of see that, you know. Yeah. But yeah, it was actually some. But uh, yeah, you, you mean, know, me, mean mini Bobby Roode. Don't even get me started on Bobby Roode. I mean, he's mini version. No, Bobby Bobby <laughs> Roode is the is the Ric Flair of the two thousands. I would say the Miz. No, I would disagree. I no. the Miz. As far as talking goes, Miz Roode was a, is the total package. But he's as far as like everything. as far as like promo style goes, yeah, Roode is the whole package. But as far as promos go, Miz. I'll, I will give you that. The Miz, the best I've ever seen The Miz do was in the feud that never happened with Daniel Bryan. And it should have. Yeah. It really should have. Yeah. That, it it that, should have happened long before it happened. Oh, yeah. That was when he was, I mean, he was spitting venom. Oh, God. He was incredible. Every every talking smack, dude. Oh, my God. You know, uh, a lot of people talked about that, and they've actually asked Dan, uh, Brian Daniels. Even when he was like not doing a, the not even the work in the gimmick, the, which that's Daniel Bryan's real name. Is you it? Know, yeah, is Brian, that his real name? Brian Danielson. I never knew that. The American, I thought I, I thought it was like Tyler Black or whatever. No, no, no. 
That's uh, Seth Rollins. Yeah, but I thought Tyler. I thought oh. I thought it was like no. As far as, as far as I know, as far as I know, he was always the American Dragon Daniel. Or yeah, Amer- I yeah, thought it American was like a, I thought it was like Tyler Black was before he became Seth Rollins. Yeah, that's what I. That's that was my thought process. Oh no! I, as far as I know, it's actually his by bio- his birth name. But they talked about that time that him and the Miz were in it, and and he walked. He like literally he, he unmiked and just walked off and was like yeah. get get out of my face get away even like to the cameraman and everything yeah and they were like you know that really threw a lot and you guys knew you didn't think you were gonna, and he was like no I left there because I was about to hit him yeah they had like legit heat for they they probably still the, do the that was the thing the and the Miz started the promos out this was all planned <laughs> you know it was all the work and he went off script but a lot he. Well, that, that was the thing. They actually let him go off script. They actually said, hey, go do this. And when you give someone that freedom, and that's he, what happens. And when he and, you know, and, and it was hilarious because at that time they were still still actually T. And who they was were it? TVPG. No, uh, they still because what Smog, uh, Talking Smack was on the, the network. Yeah. But they were doing like, um, I think AJ Styles was world heavyweight champion. Yeah, he was he was the world champion at the time, I and think. I think, or I think it was Dean or one of, one of those two. But I mean, they were having like you know they're having the, the Miz and Bryan actually made the Intercontinental Title mean something more relevant than the World Title, and there was never even a match involved in it, and that's what was like holy crap because because Dana Bryan couldn't get cleared. Yeah, he could until after the feud had cooled down. Exactly. Because I mean, they couldn't keep going on that, and, and 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 they did try to give like a little closure on it and have this match, and it's like no, 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 that doesn't work. Yeah, because the because bl- like yeah, like a famous free bird said, the bloom was off the rose. Exactly, you know, it was just it was over with by then, and that's why I say that was the probably the greatest WWE feud that never happened. Yeah, well, uh, I think we're about done with this uh, journey. Yeah, it would look that way we've gone. I don't know how long we got. I don't time shit anymore. Yeah, I think we're about done with this journey. So yeah. for... Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't we have oh, yeah, uh, an announcement from the upper management? Yeah, we have an announcement from the office. With the success of this podcast, we are going to try, possibly, to do something on a Saturday at 6.05. Yeah. I will let Joe explain we're- what we're going to be doing is, as we've been having, uh, well, we even had some suggestions and other things for the match of the week. We thought it would be funner if you get to watch the match of the week with us. So what we're going to be doing is working with Facebook and having a video come out every six oh five at six oh five every Saturday of our match of the week. Of course, in the comments for the current match of the week, you can always leave suggestions for the next match of the week. And if we do pick your idea, you will be you get a shout out on the podcast and, of course, in the video for Match of the Week, where basically I'm going to ask anyone who submits this because I get enough of it from Mike. Don't do the matches that are going to make me have brain aneurysms. Give me something good. Like, you know, Flare Steamboat, Savage Steamboat. Guys. A, 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 rant, a one that doesn't get a lot of attention, but should. Barry Wyndham, Ric Flair. Guys, give him Star K ninety seven. The botch but, finish. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, there there is the guy that, uh, and and remember, we also could do the Hogan Flair first blood match. That was second blood match, third blood match, and then it end with Hogan pinning Flair. Are you talking about uh, on censored? I think so. Was that a first blood match? Yes. No, that a, no, that was the barbed wire cage match. No, no, no. In the ca- in the it was a steel cage. It wasn't barbed. There was a barbed wire on it. Because I'm watching it on the network right now. And it was a first. The one I'm talking about was a first blood match. They had so many matches. They had a first blood match that Hogan bled like twice <laughs> and then pinned Flair. WCW. Yeah. <laughs> WCW. Where the big boys play with each other. <laughs> so. I guess with that announcement, like I, I get, actually, we could talk about what we'll be doing this Saturday because if you're going to be watching, hopefully everything works out right and we get this up and out. We and are going to be watching the formation of the NWO. Yeah, from WCW Bash, Bash at the, the Beach, Beach 1996. 90. There you go. Yeah, uh, that's a pivotal night. 
I believe, for anyone in professional wrestling at that time. Well, basically, everyone everyone talks about the Monday Night War. That was the big the Attitude Era versus the Outsider Era and the NWO Era of WCW. Well, this was the apex. Yeah, this this was when everything came to a head. The cards aligned. Yeah, and planets and just, came into alignment. NASA, you know, satellites were going off, going beep 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 this is when, and it was the start of the, what is it, 86 weeks? 83. 83 weeks. Eric Bischoff, you should watch this because this is the this is, this is going to be about your podcast. Yeah. So that, so cheap pop there for 83 weeks with Eric Bischoff and Conrad Thompson. Yeah. This was the start. Cheap of, plug. <laughs> cheap plug, and they're not even, yeah, no kidding, it's cheap. It was free. They don't pay us for crap. <laughs> they don't pay us for anything. You know, y'all, y'all should pay us for this crap. <laughs> Anyways. Signing off, two guys on a wrestling podcast. I'm Mike. I'm Joe. Later.